Um, and you said, and I'm the other Rob, I'm Rob Lee, and I'm the vice principal. Oh, are we going to have to redo this all when yeah, it's done in my club? No, we can stand up, we're live. No, no, no. I thought we were just saying that there's people still alive. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, we're going to give people uh, a moment while we're, while we're there. Um, uh, oh, we've got a few more joining us now. Excellent. So, we'll hang on a moment or two. Hope everybody's uh, well and your terms have started nicely um, and that um, hopefully your uh, absence in school, both staff and, and students, is, is well. How are we doing this in terms of absences here? But a bit of this um, cold virus and yeah, yeah. a few people up with that, but um, we seem to be back to pretty much full strength this week, don't we? So. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Can we just check that everyone can see and hear us? A thumbs up somewhere or a great, that's good. It's always good to know that you're not talking to yourself. And... Or, or maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is in this circumstance. <laughs> Who knows? Just realising how hard it is to fill on live TV now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were on Good Morning Britain, what would you be feeling? How do you feel? Super Sam was a one show. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Fair yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a one show, are you? Back to the day? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Encyclopedic knowledge of football. <laughs> <laughs> How many have we got, Dean? Just so we can share that bit of news with everyone. 19. 19. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And how are we doing on time? Minutes ago. One minute. minute to go. One minute. We don't want to peak too soon, do we? Think of what happened. <laughs> Ooh, still so there's people still arriving. 20. That's okay. Well, as you can see, we're all uh, relaxed here. Rob's got his vodka and orange. Another Rob's got Bacardi and Coke, and I've got a cup of tea. But, um, you know, whatever it takes to get you through the show. I'm not sure how that fits in the keeping two for a second. Just going to some of the drinks, please. over that, shall we? <laughs> Well, I think, are we about 11 o'clock now, Dean? Yeah, by Did, my watch. You see, you can't see Dean, but he is here. He's our timekeeper, he's our technician, he's the cameraman, he's he's going to be fielding the questions, he, he does it all. Apart from go behind the camera. Apart from that, we did try and persuade Dean to come this side of the camera this morning. It was a close run thing, and we had to, had to chain him into the room. <laughs> it wasn't going to be for Dean, but not to worry. We've got him where we need him, um, and he's going to manage things for us nicely this morning, which is really important. Some of you will also know that um, Dean's the person to talk to about QOL ties, but we'll get into that in a bit more detail in a moment. Okay, I think we should make a start because um, the 11 o'clock gong has gone. Um, and all, obviously all the advertising, the sponsors and the global TV rights are all dependent on us keeping to time. Um, so we'll, we'll have to do that. We're going to do these introductions again, because I've forgotten who this chap on my left is. I, I'm Rob Potter and I'm the principal. Okay. Okay. And I'm the other Rob. I'm Rob Lee and I'm the vice principal. Okay. And um, some of you uh, I know, I'm Kieran, um, I'm the chief executive at Swells. Uh, I've spoken to some of you, met many of you, and um, great to see so many of you online. And as we mentioned before, we've got Dean behind the scenes. Just to do the chief executive at Swalls. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm the chief executive <laughs> at Swagger's Park. I've got Swalls on my mind this morning. <laughs> Any other companies that you work with? <laughs> yes. I'm not involved in. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. Uh, Gazprom, <laughs> nothing to do with them. Spiritual, you pick up on any mistakes if we go. <laughs> You'll see that we've got a, a new backdrop this morning, um, which has been much derided by many, saying it looks a bit sterile and a, a bit like one of those terrible places where people are being held to ransom. I am in a hostage with you. <laughs> but, uh, don't let that put you off, but we thought we'd show you our big poster of our QOL framework, and that would help get people in in the mood. It may be a bit disconcerting because I think is it back? Is it backwards? Is it backwards? It might no. No, we're just kidding. We're backwards. <laughs> we're backwards. There we go. There's something more to think about. Okay, so what have we got on the agenda this morning, and how can we help? people best. Well, we know that we've got some people joining us uh, for the first time, so a very warm welcome to anybody who's, this is their first online workshop. 
helpful for you to know that previously we've done uh, live workshops and we hope to be able to go back to that soon because I think one of the things about the network is that it's a great opportunity for people to get to know each other, to chat, to build relationships and networks. Um, and it's not just all about us sharing information, it's about you making uh, partnerships with other schools who are working in similar or slightly different ways to you and, and the enriching conversations that we can have around that. So, um, welcome to everyone. Our agenda this morning, as I'll see from my notebook, we, wanna, we want to uh, make sure everybody got a copy of the last QOL network news. And in that, we provided some information about the pie, which is probably the main agenda item for us this morning. And hopefully everybody's seen that. And we sent out some PowerPoint slides and a film to go with that. If anybody hasn't got that, uh, please let us know. Dean, should they put that in the chat? Um, yeah. And then we can do, yeah. uh, make sure that we get that sent out to anybody this morning. Um, we're going to record this morning's meeting, so um, hopefully nobody minds, but if you're unhappy about that, please let us know, uh, and then we'll do what we can about that. We want everybody to be able to ask any questions uh, at a different point, and Dean's going to field the questions for us. Um, so that if there's anything we're talking about that assumes knowledge you might not have or, or you're not sure what we're going on about, um, please just let us know. And what are they going to do? P press the hand press up button, Dean? Press the hand up button, yeah. Yeah, or, or wave at Dean frantically um, <laughs> and we'll take any questions. Um, we want to give you a little bit of an update about what's happening with the network and some forthcoming events. Um, we're off to the NAS conference next week. Uh, Rob and I are presenting there. Um, we've got a uh, we've got um, two workshop slots there that we're going to be presenting on, linking um, QOL to COVID. And what we know from our experience here, and what some of you may know, is that actually having a QOL framework in place um, prior to COVID was really, really helpful because it allowed us to have those strong, trusting relationships with families and the boys. And that really helped to inform how we could work well with our families during that time of lockdown, because many of our students, like I'm sure many of yours, weren't able to be in school for a whole variety of reasons during COVID. So our workshops will talk about the benefits of the framework. We all hope that we're not going to be in any further lockdowns, but we don't know. So how those, this framework and this way of working can help through difficult situations. So that's the, the essence of the workshop we're doing then. Um, we're presenting at the Engage conference in uh, November in Manchester. And then we're doing a workshop for SWALS, which is possibly why we were confused earlier, or could be nothing to do with it. We're doing that sometime late November. And then we're working with Warwickshire University or the University of Warwick um, about some professional uh, conferences there. I think December the 10th, was that right? We were talking to Professor Des the other day. Yeah, and combining with them to look at the research around quality of life and you know, supporting that academically as well. Yeah, exactly. And that's um, building on the work that we did last term where we shared our research findings from our uh, internal action research. Um, and um, we are keen to carry on doing at least one project per term. Uh, all aspects of, of uh, a QOL study um, and then we're happy to share those with everybody and we'll be using subsequent workshops and newsletters to share and I know that the NAS schools have been involved in a, a project as well and that we'll be um, I think it's that at the next workshop we'll be hearing from them uh, from Joe and her team about what it is that um, they found out through through their bit of action research. So we look forward to hearing from them. Uh, this morning, we'll also be hearing from Lorraine Clegg, uh, who's from one of the NAS schools at uh, Church Lawn. So we'll be really interested. Lorraine's got, just got a, a short one and a half hour section she's going to talk to us about. <laughs> so no, I, I'm kidding. Lorraine wants five minutes just to share some of the findings um, and the experience that they've had. And we also want to hear from anybody else, um, experience of any aspect of QOL. This is a question and answer forum, and obviously it's far better live, um, but we want to hear from anybody else. 
We last term, uh, the three of us went to London to meet with um, some uh, lawyers around uh, the contracts for QOL. And um, we'll be talking a bit more about that at the next one. We're trying to look at how the licensing for QOL can work and any associated costs. So we're, we're not quite there with that information yet, but just so you know, it is on our minds. Um, there will be some costs associated with joining the network. What we are trying to do is look to see how we can keep those as low as possible. This is not a money-making exercise. This is just a, a trying to cover off some of our costs and, um, and help us develop resources that are going to be helpful to everybody in the network. So more on that next time. Uh, there's a little bit about intellectual property, about how we share resources, how we use resources, um, and a little bit about the licensing agreements and what you get for being part of the network that we, you know, we want to make it as helpful and as effective as, as possible. Rob, anything else to add about that? No, I just, I just don't want anyone to be alarmed and feel that, oh my word, I'm starting something here that's going to have a huge bill attached to it. We're talking about a very small amount of money, but just to sort of, so everybody's contributing a bit and just to help us out as such, but it's not, nothing to be alarmed on. Of course, we'll talk to people about that as we go along. We don't want it to be a barrier to anybody, so. We're being a bit deliberately vague about it at the minute because we haven't sorted out in terms of what a pricing structure might look like for different types of schools, different sizes of schools, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, it? and it's essentially, it's essentially to cover off the cost of the sort of IT developments and, and what we put into it, it's not to kind of make a profit. I think it's also a bit of a collective way of working, so there's an understanding of when you're talking about quality of life or when we're talking about using the branding and things that you share with the network and signed off and agreed and nothing too limiting, just a bit of a, because it is building up quite a bit of traction at the moment, there's lots of people interested, so it's just making sure it doesn't um, spread too thinly and the core principles of it can stay under that name. Yeah, stay, stay, stay within the boundaries of what we all see the project as, they don't get stretched. I think it's just trying to keep the fidelity of the model and make sure that we've got some levels of control over uh, how it's being used, where it's being used, um, and in whose name. So that's a little bit of a project that we're working on. Um, but I think the main bit that people might be interested in this morning uh, it's just talking a bit more about the QOL Pi, how you get a QOL Pi, why would you want a QOL Pi, for goodness sake, um, and, uh, and what will you be able to do with that? Um, now, we know that, I think, Dean, am I right in thinking we've got two schools signed up with their That's right, Pies yeah. this morning? So that's uh, yeah, Henshaw's College and Doohan College. That's right, yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. So thank you both to you two trailblazers. Um, any any thoughts that you might want to pitch in on how that process was for you and what that looks like? We'd we'll really love to hear from you this morning. Um, but for those of you who haven't got around to that yet, all you need to do is send in. There's a there's a place in the last workshop to uh, the last newsletter to yep. fill in. Is that right, Rob? Yep. There was a link um, with a form to fill in with some basic details, and once we've received that, we can um, set the pie up, or Dean can. How would you get set up with that? The Royal We will set up this yeah, time. Someone yeah. out there will. <laughs> and, and I think it takes about 45 minutes. Is that right, Dean? That's right, yeah. That's OK. And just so that, uh, as a reminder, or for those who haven't um, been to previous workshops, what is this QOL PI? Well, PI stands for Planning, Implementation and Evaluation. And what we've developed is using Microsoft Planner. Yep. Um, is, is a way of helping you to organize how you implement QOL within your organization. Do you want to give a little bit more background about that, Rob, about how it works and how you get access to it and the, the functionality around it? Yeah, can be slipping in these words. Yeah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I suppose it might be worth sort of going right back to the beginning, really, and talking about all of the IT things yeah. that support um, the quality of life stuff. Um, some of you will be using the um, sort of data or questionnaire collection tool that we've developed. Um, I'm not too sure how many schools are using that, but um, I don't know if we've got a screenshot of that. I'm sure. Dean, just so we can yeah. kind of give an example, because um, these are things that we've developed along the way um, that have been really useful. So back when we started um, our quality of life 
um, journey, I suppose, we were filling in um, sheets of paper, questionnaires on paper, taking that data, putting it into a spreadsheet, and then kind of doing it like that. This is a tool we developed um, to make that a lot easier. So um, what happens is our students and their families will get a link um, to a questionnaire that they fill in online. And then that data automatically gets put into this, um, this progress tracker. Um, and you'll be able to see all of the questions with the responses um, going through time. So it enables us to see whether things are getting improving or getting worse. Um, and you can put that alongside the family um, the family questionnaire. So that's been a real kind of step forward for us. And that is available to any other school that wants to sign up for it. So on the screen there, I think what we've got is student responses to questions. Yeah. Term by term. Yeah. Set against family responses to the same questions about the impact on QOL for them, term by term. term. By term. And, th and those... you. You can scroll through those, so that's showing three terms, but that would that would go backwards as well. Um, so that's a really useful way of kind of seeing whether the interventions that we're putting in place are having an effect or not, and the same for the families. Um, so that's available, and anyone who wants to kind of sign up to that, again, if they um, get in touch with ourselves or Dean, um, we can get that set up for you. What system is that, Robert? That's on? So that's a login through our Quality of Life website portal log in um, and set your students and families up and that will automatically send those questionnaires out they'll get filled in and it will produce that that data for you and that's all microsoft products as well isn't it so that's power bi that's sat behind that isn't yeah it? so you don't you don't need any, i mean that all kind of works through the website so that's a really easy one you don't need kind of very much it knowledge at all for for doing that there are other sort of extended um data analysis tools i suppose um microsoft power bi so um, you're able to get an overview within the school about what's um, important or not important, going well, not going well, um, and what we should be doing as a school strategically um, rather than individually. Um, but anyone who's interested in that, we can we can get you set up. And so that allows schools to look at individual data for students and families, but also allows us to look at cohort or whole school data yeah. at any particular point in time. And that goes back to our, our framework poster, you know, how do we use this information to inform curriculum, operational and strategic planning? That's it. OK, um, so moving on from that, so um, schools that are implementing quality of life um, within their organisation, um, we we realised that we needed some way of being able to, for people to know what they've got to do. So the pie that Kieran was talking about. So we developed a set of tools um, in Microsoft Planner, um, which is available to everyone. Um, I don't know whether we can put a screenshot on Ding, so it will make a bit more sense. Uh, sorry, about that's OK. So the way to get this is to fill the form in. And like we explained, there's a link um, and Dean can get you set up. Um, as soon as you set up, you'll get a link um, and you'll follow that and you'll get a blank pie, which will appear on the screen any second. Now. There we go. Can you see that? So that's Henshaw's um, team and pie. Uh, no, that doesn't look like a pie on our screen, Dean. Mm -hmm. so. See it. Oh, OK, sorry. Let me just check, see what I'm doing. So when you set the pie up, what, what's the sort of the situation after that? How about now? No, that's something else, Dean. <laughs> so what's <laughs> <Dean's> working on pie? <laughs> so pie's, a pie is just a way of you being able to kind of track your progress um, working towards implementing um, quality of life. So it allows you to see the, the stages you need to go through and assign members of staff um, who, who's going to do that particular thing. So that might be... Um, setting up policies, it might be implementing the questionnaire within the school, um, and you'll see it split into four areas, and then there are tasks underneath that. And whilst Dean's give, give me a moment, to... I'll try something else. Um, it won't let me show Teams because I'm using Teams. Uh, okay, um, but we'll I just, can, uh, might do a screenshot. I can, I, I'll open okay. the planner on the um, website and I'll show you that. What, what's really great about it is um, it, it can give you some visuals as well about you know what's in progress, what's been completed. Um, and what there is left to do. So if you're managing the implementation of quality of life within the school, 
doesn't give you an overview of how well we're doing, what the focuses need to be in the sort of terms ahead. We're very nearly there. Um, how about now? No, no. So <laughs> nice visuals there, Dean, uh, but they're not related. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, I think they are. So around stretching forward to see it. Okay, so um, what you'll see across the top is is four areas. Um, and I can't, I can't. So we've got commitment, yeah. planning, implementation, and evaluation. That's it. Okay, so under each under those headings, um, there'll be various tasks that need to be completed. Um, and what's really nice about this system is each task um, you can. You can put resources in there to help that person achieve that task. Um, you can assign that task to a member of um, your staff. You can add a start date, a finish date, um, any comments. And then as you're working through that, Dean will show us a kind of overview of what that looks like as a graphic. Um, it'll give you a quick overview of, of, of where you are within the implementation. Um, that's for your school. Um, these will also help us um, put on training sessions because we'll be able to see where, where people are getting stuck or maybe um, lots of schools are, are at the point of writing a policy or whatever and then it enables us to say, okay, that's, that needs to be the focus for us um, in the next session. So, so we'll use this in a way to inform our oh, workshops and our strategic development and if there are particular resources that people are looking for and want help with, we can think about how we can we can help with that. Are there any questions? That's a very sort of right at the top. Are there any questions about how that might work or or anything from what I've said so far? As you can imagine, if you're thinking of some questions, that you know it's a really helpful tool to sit alongside or within your school improvement plan. And it's also a way of thinking, well, actually, I can tag some of these things to different members of staff's appraisal targets. It may be part of what we need to do in terms of communicating with our parents or governor's agendas. It may be something to do about staffing set or the training policy. So, you know, you can use your pie to help you think about strategically across the year. How long is this going to take us? Who's going to be involved in the process of this implementation? How do we get everybody on board with it? Um, and how do we manage this process internally? Because I think one of the things that from our experience anyway, um, this this is you know you know right in the center of your of our ethos, our culture, how we work, what we're doing. And so all roads lead back to QOL. You know, we would be asking ourselves the question, why are we doing that if we cannot track uh, a benefit back to the QOL of students and families at the end of it? So it helps us to think about why we're doing what we're doing strategically and operationally, and to then think about, right, in terms of improvement planning, what do we need to do? What's the evidence base? And a lot of that will come from the surveys and the ongoing key working, which is critical um, for hearing what, what's on the minds of our young people and our families. I think I think getting the QOL sort of embedded is it's quite a big task and it is over time and I think this helps um, sort of helps see what you've got to do next and helps people around the school see that there is momentum and um, they've all got a part in that um, and assigning people to various tasks lets them feel like actually people have staff bought into the various elements of it. Alongside this there's a there's an area um, that we set up for each school to to put their resources in and share documents and um, images or whatever it is they, they need to support the party, um, as well as a place for kind of chat and conversation. On the top of that, there's um, a place for schools to share resources with each other. Um, and when you sign up, you will get an invitation to that kind of um, QR community, I suppose, um, because we will have all of the resources. Um, our resources might not be appropriate for your school, but there will be a school that, that is, is similar to you that, that might have something. So we see that as a really good way of um, working together on this because it is a collaboration and not just us saying how it has to be done. Rob, and to, to you, this can look a, a bit overwhelming, can't it? And I think it's about bite-sized chunks, isn't it? I, I think, you know, we've been doing this for four or five years now. Mm. So I think we are further down the line, but I think 
there are some real stages and we're happy to talk to people about those as they go along of, you know, what, what can you do initially? How can you see an impact? How can that change practice? How can that change things? And I think even if you're not following the exact lines of the pie, there is bits within the pie where we can say, start with that group of children, group of family, get the people doing that, and actually um, you can build that momentum. I think it's it's that buying the stakeholders across the school, which is really, really important, and yeah. leadership teams and all those other bits. But um, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. You're not just going to click through those four, through those areas and expect yeah. to be there within six months, I think. And I think I think that's a really good point. This is a journey, isn't it? It's an ongoing journey. Our journey is further down the line, but but we're still on it and we're still evolving. And the more we get familiar with it, the more we'll refine what we do internally, the more we'll be using the data more effectively. And, and I think it's all about reflective practice and it's all yeah. about keeping people fresh and not just doing the same thing again and again. It's really looking at what you've done previously, what you can make better next time around an ethos and culture and the framework. And I think yeah, if you just find those questionnaires out and people are not really looking at them and you're not really doing those things, that's when that's when it will lose momentum. It's it's always having that outward facing view and bringing those views into school and it's an opportunity to really keep everybody thinking about why we do what we do. People often know what we're doing and how we're doing it, but why are we doing it? And it allows you to 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 drive a lot of those conversations internally in school and have they got the right curriculum? Are we doing things that are important to young people? Are we, you know, those young people are different to the young people previously and they've got different interests and all those types of things and generalisations of skills and cross-curricular links and all those types of things and it can be really empowering for the staff to, you know, keeping, keeping them fresh and keeping them talking to other people as well. I think we've also learned a lot about how we communicate with families and um, on the back of this, you've done a number of, I think you've done a number of uh, family four and things. I'm sure these are things that a lot of you are already doing, but it's just thinking about how do you link uh, QOL and families? Some okay. of the ideas that, that you've done about family forums. Yeah, and I, and I think the kind of looking at the data and what, what families are worried about and what's on their mind has enabled us to think, okay, this is the point where we need to get our therapy team involved and do some sessions on speech and language or whatever. Um, but using that data to drive how we work with families or working with young people is um, it's been valuable. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's, it it shows it, it's student voice as well. It shows that we're listening to what people are saying and responding to it. And there's a good evidence base for that um, through that um, initial slide that we showed. Yeah. 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 Have we any questions there, Dean? We don't have any hands up. But if okay. anyone would like to put their hand up and ask a question, please do. Is there anyone from uh, Dewan or Henshaws want to say anything about the pie? We'd love to hear from you. No, no pressure if, if everything's running smoothly, though. But um, Dean's the person to talk to about the pie. And you'll just need to think that um, you're finding a mutually agreeable time um, so that you can meet up to, to organise that. And it takes about 45 minutes. There is a link to a film. Apologies if the, the original link didn't work. That was just a technical glitch at our end. But there is a film that goes along that shows a bit of a, uh, a longer version of, of what we've just been through this morning. So if you wanted to share that with your leadership team, with your governors, with anybody else, that's there and please use that. And I think there's a separate um, set of slides that there are along with that that everybody's got yeah. there. So those are, are all available. Um, we'll keep going with the newsletters, but one of the things that we want to start getting better at this end, uh, and hopefully that will help everybody, is we've got a lot of resources that we haven't yet uploaded. So we'll be doing that over the next week or so. Um, and we'll start using the chat function. Yeah. Is there anything we need to say about that, Big Rob? There is. So um, for you to be able to get to the, the chat and the resources, um, you'll need to um, follow the link, fill in the details um, in the form, and then Dean can get you set up so you'll get access to that. So you need to have a pie to be you exactly. to need, You need to have access to the, the pie. Uh, that's a kind of bit of incentivization. Yeah. There's a bottle of wine when you're not here. <laughs> no, if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we've talked a little bit about the pie, and that will be this this sort of 
portal, if you like, will be one of the main ways of us working together as a network going forwards. So put a hand up. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, Chris Silverwood. Chris, good morning. Hi, it's um, Chris, Lisa and Luke from Henshaws. We just want morning to say- Morning to all of you. Hello. <laughs> Um, we just want to say that the signing up for the process was really simple and really easy. And Dean, um, it was really smooth and good, um, so I'd recommend it. And the resources that we've got are great. Thank you. That was lucky for you, Dean, wasn't it? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> very public feedback. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> um, that's great to hear. Thanks uh, for that. And is, is it? What, once you're in the pie, is it is it bewildering or is it you know a, a helpful experience? You can navigate through it easily enough. It, it is a little bit bewildering when you you see all the information, but I think once you've sort of spent time just looking through each one, um, you can see the direction that we need to go in. So what we're going to do now is then have a specific pie meeting to go through each one and allocate tasks and timescales and things like that. So it's an amazing starting point um, that we need to, it, it's, you, you get out what you put in, isn't it? So we need to just sort of start using it now. Thanks, that's, I mean, that's really helpful because I think, you know, it, it's all very well for us to sit here and think this will, this will be helpful for everybody. Uh, this is what everybody needs, but actually, um, the more feedback we get about how we can improve that, whether it's the access, whether we have to work with Dean and make him more, you know, polite and friendly because he can be a bit gruff, can't he? Um, but it's it's those sorts of things, you know. It, it is the is that interface helpful and the way we're going to conduct the chats and the sharing of resources, all of those sorts of things. Um, any any feedback is helpful to us because we just want to. We want it to be as easy as possible for people to use. I think what we've tried to do is use um, pieces of software that everyone should be relatively familiar with or should be able to pick up quite quickly. So the, the use of the Microsoft Teams, most people have had some experience with that over the last 18 months, unfortunately. Um, and the Microsoft Planner that is, although people may not have used it, it is quite intuitive and, and feels like a Microsoft product so you can kind of make your way around it relatively easy once you've kind of had a figure around. There are phone apps as well so I mean it's it's quite useful if you're on the go and you need to check things on your phone. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. quite you know it's it's well developed isn't it? Quite and it's all integrated into the rest of the Microsoft um, packages that people will will have because their schools is no extra cost to kind of get some of these things. We we kind of look at other products but there's always there are always costs and then it's a, it's a whole set of other things that people have got to learn. So um, it's got, ha, they have limitations because software can't do everything, but I think it's probably the best, best then Has anybody got any anxieties about installing the Pi, using the Pi, um, or anything from a, either from a, a technical point of view or a security point of view or any other point of view? If anybody's got any concerns like that, that's also important for us to know about because there may be something that we can do to help uh, alleviate those anxieties. Um, so if you uh, have a look at that form, if you, we need, if you need it sending out again, um, we can do that, but um, please have a think about when you might be able to get that set up because the sooner you've got access to the, uh, the better. Okay, any other thoughts or questions about the pie from anyone? Okay, well, I'll just have a, a change of voice. Is, is Lorraine with us? Hi, Mum. But unfortunately, we've been having quite a few difficulties with IT this morning, so I'm actually on my mobile phone. <laughs> I've got my head hanging out of a window because this is the only way we can get a decent signal. So I do hope you can hear me. <laughs> we can hear you loud and clear, so thank you for going to such lengths. Oh, honestly, you're perched on my, on my desk at the moment, half out the window. Um, yes, I can talk to you a little bit about where we are with QOL. Um, it's probably only where everybody else is, to be perfectly honest. 
But when we started this process a couple of years ago, when it was first introduced to us, we made the decision to do it really slowly here. Um, and so we introduced our key workers nice and slowly, again, through COVID. So we had a few members of staff working as key workers, but then we rolled it out to other members of staff. So we naturally got people on board. So last year we officially introduced key workers, although it had been happening already. Um, and we've had 12 months of staff building up good relationships between families and students and ourselves. So the key worker role is now embedded across the school, which is absolutely significant in the whole process this. In our school, what we've got is um, the key workers work for about two, possibly three students, and the form teacher oversees the key workers and the students within their form. So the teacher will act as a stand-in if there's an absence from a key worker, so they will know fully where their students are at, and the, the, the teachers, staff, families all know each other, so it works well for us. If we've got one or two uh, more trickier uh, students or families that we're working with. We tend not to have a key worker working with two or three students. We tend to have them just working with that particular family, but that's because of need. So the key workers are all in place. We ironed out a few of our difficulties in terms of um, some parents being key workers as one-to-one -one support for students in school. And so we back, backed on that one. And basically, we've got that relationship established now, so parents know that they're not the one-to-one -one support workers. Our key workers will make the calls home, will receive calls in school. They're the main point of contact. And our key workers catch up with the students every day. There are several times a day when they catch up, namely form time, which is every morning, and then every afternoon just before the students go home as well. So following on from that, now that staff were comfortable with the key workers, we then looked at the curriculum, the QOL curriculum. And there was a couple of members of staff in our secondary department who actually already ran things like life skills sessions, PSHCE sessions, etc. So these members of staff kind of volunteered, really, because they were already doing a lot of the role to coordinate it. So. The members of staff then got in our meeting room and they laid out all the papers and all the curriculums from things like careers, life skills, PSHCE, food technology, zones of regulation, RSE, adventure learning, and the list goes on. So we got all of those things that generally we do each year and we looked at the QOL curriculum and we dovetailed it all in with the QOL curriculum. So the members of staff eventually, and it did take a while, it took about a week or so, they came out with a long term plan for the year and they broke it down to key stage three lessons, key stage four lessons, etc. So this time we were able to start with the curriculum, with the life skills curriculum, the, the QOL curriculum. At the beginning of the year, we had two inset days. During those inset days, the key workers got the evidence out that we'd already collected when we didn't call it QOL, when we called it like <laughs> everything else. So we all had those files of evidence and we've literally gone through the files and picked which which bits of the evidence match the QOL baselines, basically. So we've now set up these folders. We've renamed them as QOL folders and we've got the evidence and everything in there as well. Um, we, all the key stages have got themes that are pertinent to their needs for this time. So, for instance, our key stage four students, well, the key stage four students at the moment are looking at my organisation aspect of it. So this term, their task is to baseline all of my organisation and to work with them on some of those initial um, ideas. And that's going really rather nicely. And we're getting lots of very positive feedback from staff. Um, we've had staff meetings discussing key worker roles and discussing content. We've looked at evidence um, and we've, crucially, the uh, multi-agency support team, which is our OT, our speech and language um, and our ed psych, we've involved them in what we're doing as well. So uh, an example of the way they've been involved is there's a little one that couldn't tie his laces. Now, when I say little, he was 15 and he couldn't tie his shoelaces. So our OT and our key work has been really, really working hard just on tying laces. And the achievement came last weekend when mum took him shoe shopping and got him a pair of trainers because he could tie his laces. Now that is an example of, uh, you know, several people working together and achieving what was needed for this particular individual.
We've also got uh, parents that have asked certain things, such as um, I'm thinking of riding a bike at the moment because, uh, again, of sensory needs. And again, several people have worked together to, to help this student achieve that. We've had um, one of the most recent ones is travel training, which comes in, in part of it, of the My Organisation bit. We've actually asked parents to apply for bus passes. And because we had the key workers in place, we were able to explain to the parents verbally why the bus passes were needed. And some of the questions we were asked were, well, why does he need a bus pass? We live in the country. He's never going to use a bus. He'll have a car when he goes up. And the key worker was actually able to explain why it was so important that they were able to actually use public transport. We had other parents that said they weren't entitled to bus passes, so we could signpost them because our children have all got EHCPs. And so all of this is kind of together, really. And we've made a really good start. But I think it's probably because of the passion of the staff. I think because we've taken it step by step, the the idea, everything was already being done, but it was called different things. We've now managed to collate it all a little bit better so we can actually see that we're moving forward with this. We're in very early stages, but basically that's where we are as a school. Great, that's what a, that's fabulous. Sounds like they're doing better than us. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can run the next workshop. That's oh. fantastic. And actually, I'll pick up on a couple of things, and then uh, if you're all right, Lady, you might, you might take some questions from others. But we've you, all bored of our own. It's that um, you know that whole staff commitment, and you talked about the passion of your staff and the drive of your staff wanting to make this happen. And that's the first bit of the pie, is getting commitment. Rob talked about it earlier, didn't you, Rob, about all stakeholders understanding why we're doing what we're doing. And that, and we invest a lot of time there, haven't we? Yeah, and I think the other thing is, is lots of the things, you're, like you said, Leanne, you are already doing, but it's just making sure we're doing the right things with the right people at the right time. And that's that reflective practice, isn't it? And that's that identifying what's important to that young person. Actually, you can sort that thing out with that young person. Then they can be in a better place to learn other things and other skills and generalised skills and all the rest of it. So I, I don't think any of it's revolutionary, but the organisation of it and the student led and the family led. Being able to track what you've done and, and the impact that's had on that young person's life is, is, is just brilliant evidence that you do the school's doing the right thing. It does make um, some of our quality assurance visits, we don't want to say the word because it's not about that, but very easy because you're able to demonstrate things in a way it's organised and concise and the right thing for the right people. Yeah. Dean, have we got a hand up? We've got a hand up from Chris again. Chris, question for Lorraine, is it? It is, yeah. Um, that sounds really good, Lorraine. And it's something that we started doing um, sort of yesterday and the day before. It's asking for everyone's curriculum across every part of college, so therapy, care, um, 24 hour curriculum, etc. So when you said you laid it out all on the table and then it took a couple of weeks, is that right? It took a couple of weeks to go through the whole thing and get yeah, it? Absolutely, because we've got um, people that are responsible for things like D of E. And yeah. saying it as well in terms of what the sort of things they did on DV and how it dovetailed into the curriculum. So there was a heck of a lot of staff that was involved in this because they all had their own expertise in their own area. And we've got this long term plan now, which when you look at it, it looks great. But I'll guarantee by the end of the summer, it will have changed yeah. on, on the needs and, and how people are fitting it into the curriculum. It really hasn't been easy, but because all staff were on board, because we're already doing it, it, it's just made it that little bit better, really. I think that's why I was surprised. I was surprised it took a couple of weeks because in my head, I'm thinking Christmas um, will have all that sorted. Um, and now you're think, making me think it, it, we could do it a little bit earlier. You could, but we had to free people up. We had to make that dedicated freeing up of time for people. Okay. So, yeah. And actually, those sorts of questions are brilliant because it's that practical, what does this mean on the ground to us? How long will that take us? Or how long did it take you? Or what did you learn along the way? And, and I think a lot of this, just like Lorraine's been explaining, this is all the stuff that everybody's doing. Well, you know, all of us are doing aspects of this. This is a framework, an approach that brings it together and helps people to see how all those little individual contributions add up to the bigger picture. 
Leon, are you um no, I'm sorry, are you able to um target setting? Are you have you got any sort of target setting process from the key working to the family voice and how you sort of setting those targets or what you're working on with the young people, or is it done? Is it and how are you pulling that together to start interest? No, we've got the was we've only started it this term and it seems to be going, it seems on the surface to be going well. But towards the end of this half term, we'll have another meeting with staff and actually get their views on it. Because what's happened is we were part of the pilot last year that did actually do this across the school with four students. Um, and the key worker ran with the questionnaires and everything about and could just to see how it would work. There were an awful lot of teething troubles. We haven't sent out questionnaires yet on purpose because we wanted those uh, relationships with key workers and families to be absolutely solid before we hit them with some of those hard questions on the questionnaire. Because what we didn't want to do is put families off. So oh, yeah, yeah. everything's gone really slowly so that we can get those foundations right before we move any further forward. And this half term, again, is another kind of trial, really, Luke, looking forward. Let's see how it's gone actually on the ground and let's get all the, the people in the room and talk about what's gone right, what's gone wrong and what we can improve. So nice and slow. I think that's such important advice to anybody who's just at the starting point here. Are we back? We're back in the room. Uh, it's, yes. it's sorry, it's going in and out. It's just fading every now and then. I'm really sorry. I didn't hear anything you just said. Okay, sorry. I think it was our fault actually. I think there was an internet issue at our end. Just saying though that the idea of a pilot study, working with a small group of willing families and staff to start off, makes every bit of sense, and going slowly before you launch into service. I think that's such an important thing of preparing the ground so that you know everything you do has levels of success around it that you can share and champion and share with families and talk to staff about why this works so well. Um, as we said, you know, this is a journey, it'll take time, but it's about helping people see how their bit knits into that bigger picture. And I think the way you've gone about it, you know, Really, really helpful for other people to hear that because it sounds like a very successful and effective model. So, Lorraine, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and if anybody's got further questions for Lorraine, we've got time to take them, or they might want to put them into the into the chat. I think Lorraine, listening to some of your stories of things that have happened off the back of this sort of key work relationships, I think we always felt in our setting that we knew the young people really, really well, and that we knew exactly what what they needed and what they wanted from us and actually working in this slightly different way has been quite enlightening that even though we were a school of 70 young people and being, having that individual key worker we were able to pull on things that we never knew might known previously yeah before. that's, that's what I think it's a systematic student voice isn't it just yeah. and it, it, it was quite enlightening about how we were able to solve some quite simple things as young people who made a huge difference to them which we might not have ended identified without the sort of the setup that we had, wasn't it? And yeah. I think that was um, quite shocking in some ways, mm. you know, and actually quite alarming, but, but it was great when you pick up on them. Mm. I think the other thing to just for everyone, for all of us to, to stay mindful of, you know, we all know that the young people are in our schools because that they have struggles in life and issues that impact on their quality of life. Um, and we need support and you know a lot of that is addressed through EHCPs and what we put in place to make sure uh, that we're fulfilling those uh, responsibilities. But QOL is also a very positively um, focused framework and ethos. It's not just about addressing deficits, it's about saying what makes you happy, what makes you want to get up in the morning that we can make more of. Tell us more about that. What are your aspirations? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What's, what's your personality? How do we help you shine as a young person 
on your preparation on the way to adult life. And so you can be proud of the person you want to be and do the things that really, you know, uh, enrich your life. And QOL well is a way of finding out that and linking that to what we do in school. So it's not just all about saying, well, you're not so good at that and you struggle with that. And it's actually saying, we know you're brilliant at that. How can we make the best out of that and use that sometimes to help sort out some of the other issues that young people may have? So again, when we talk about QOL to staff, to governors, to families, to young people, this is a very positive thing. And, um, and I think that links into how we, how we talk about risk assessments, for example. And what well, I'm going to turn to you to talk about, you know, how risk assessments can be looked at positively rather than as something that's constraining. Yeah. Um, I just want to pick up on the, the sort of target setting from mm. the, the question. I want, Dean, would you be able to just stick that um, student versus family data Ooh. up? Um, something that we're working on to develop is a way of um, attaching either a target or or something, like we said, it's not all negative, but to kind of promote something if someone's saying they're good at something or, or, or they're feeling really good about it, how we can kind of say, we've noticed that you've said this, we've done this, or we've we've helped you in some way, um, and, and then be able to kind of review that in the next terms data so um it's something that we're we're working to kind of knit those two things together so it's a really one one place to do it all so we can see the data um, and you'll see that there are some um there's a, there's a little black box in the in the colored box and we're hoping that we're going to be able to um write our intervention in there and then that'll be reviewed the next term in the next box so that we can see whether that's had an impact or not and that's really useful for tracking um, whether what we're doing is is working or not, because there's no point doing something if it's not having any effect. So um, that was that. And, and then following on from that, um, we've started looking at our risk assessments slightly differently. Um, we, we would have used the kind of standard school risk assessment, which is um, a list of things that, that aren't safe and what the school are going to do to, to make that safer. Um, but actually looking at it from a, you know, I don't know, a young person's shown that they can catch the bus, we've seen them do that. That's a positive thing. So I think we're writing risk lessons more about what young people can do and what we've got evidence that they've shown they can do rather than a kind of deficit model um, because that's that's not great for someone to look at a long list of things that they can't do. Um, we look at it in terms of a long list of things that they can do. And if, if it's not on there, then we're assuming that that's something that we have to to help with. So um, that's been a really nice innovation for young people, for families, because actually young people are driven by the stuff that they want to do. So if they want to go to town at the weekend, they're driven to, well, what have I got to do to do that? Well, you've got to be able to catch a bus. You need to know about stranger danger. You need to know about, you know, change and, and, and adding up. And, and that's, that's a really positive way to, to, to make progress. So it's tapping into what the young people want to do and then showing them how they can, if you like, build their own evidence base to yeah. get to where they to want to, to be. Want to and that, that links directly to the risk assessment. Obviously for cleaning bedrooms and things, there's no real incentive, but... <laughs> <laughs> Apart from a beautiful <laughs> tiny room. <laughs> okay, um, we're doing well. Um, we, we might not need all the time um, we set aside this morning, and that's, that's fine if we don't need it. Any further questions at this point? Okay. Oh, that, yeah, we've got a hand. We've got a hand up. Okay. Um, I can't see you from at the moment. Oh, we've got two. Uh, Joanne Smith. All right. Joanne. Hi there. Um, I just good wanted, morning. Good morning. I just wanted to add a little to what Lorraine said. Um, clinical lead, speech and language therapist for the organisation, the National Autistic Society. And where we are, um, with regards to quality of life is really seriously thinking about the validity of the questionnaires in terms of some of the concepts that's just so abstract for the people that we work with, that we are uh, trying to come together to uh, for a way forward in terms of what's gonna be really, really meaningful to our children? What do they 
want, what's important to them. And we're beginning to think about perhaps um, under the domains of, of the quality of life, but simpli simplifying it a great deal. So we've come up with headings such as what's important to me, friends, food, hobbies, ability to make choices, um, the staff, the transport. I mean, you know, what's the taxi like that I come to school with every day or like the people on the bus, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really person centered. And what we are sort of coming together to put together and, and agree a way forward is that actually perhaps that's the best way as a starting point. So questionnaires that are completely related to what our children are interested in, questionnaire, not, I'm not even going to say questionnaires, I'm going to say uh, gathering viewpoints, gathering opinions, gathering thoughts, because we don't want tokenistic yes, no answers. What we want our people to do, our young people to do is to give their opinion and express their um, wants, desires, aspirations in whatever way we can. So starting off really, really simple, starting off really slowly, but ensuring that those really key points in terms of what is important to a child or a young person is captured in the best way possible. So we're talking about differentiation. We're talking about taking photographs, perhaps um, doing some doing some filming um, and capturing children, really enjoying themselves. And yeah, that's going, that's going to be our starting point. So we have got the key worker um roll um rolling out we have got the curriculum and i'm glad you said that actually the quality of life is all about bringing it together i think that's exactly it but i think the the use of questionnaires what's bringing it together is incorporating what we've already got in place in our schools for children and young people to um to give their opinions with regard to their annual review so we're not even, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, but we're, we're going to make it better and we're going to make it more person centred. And so therefore, the gathering of views about uh, the headings that, we, that we've that um, we uh, all agreed will also feed into the annual review process and the all about me section because they all dovetail together. So I think once that's in place, it will be really, really helpful. And then, uh, you know, sort of every very very frequently um just checking in with that child to see or that young person to see how their life's going really joe thank you so much for sharing that There's, that's such important information for people to hear um and that's brilliant so a couple of things first of all um are you, are you would you be happy to share anything that you've done and put that in those resources into the into the into the mix I definitely will once it's all, I'm nearly there, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, it's it's really interesting to have everyone's viewpoints because what we all agreed was, yes, absolutely, we need a platform for our children and young people so we can hear their voice. However, let's be, you know, let's be a little bit creative here. Uh, they Everyone's different. And therefore the most important concept is gathering views, not a yes, no questionnaire, which for a lot of our kids is completely meaningless. Sure. And I think one of the things that we can talk about is how if when you've got to a point where you're happy with that, how we might be able to set that up so that we can help you do the data analysis in the same way that it's done on the on the the um, more structured questionnaire that, that other schools might be using that might be more appropriate to their cohorts of young people. I, th I, think, yeah. what is, I think what we're hoping is that Potentially, when you go into the software where you do the questionnaire, there's a range of different questionnaires people could pick. And then they could use that off and then people can share those amongst other schools and people could pick the appropriate one for them. Yeah, I think that's I what think, we're hoping yeah. to do. I think, it, I think initial thoughts with regards to, you know, collecting data was that it's going to have to be a sort of qualitative narrative initially. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, because it's too difficult to score red, amber, green. I think we'll start off with a, a narrative and then go from there really i mean we will be using the aet framework as well so alongside yeah. yeah fantastic and i think that's a brilliant example of how we we need to fine tune all of these things for the populations that we're working with this is 
you know, the, it's a framework that we've got that helps people understand how it fits together, but also recognises the young people and their families and the issues that are of importance to them. And that's nothing that we want to prescribe. That's that's the beauty of having a network where people can collaborate um, and, and come up with great solutions that fit the, the, the context that they're working in. That's, that's brilliant. So thank you so much for sharing that. And we look forward to hearing more about that uh, next time. Uh, and I think the power of it is it makes us reflect on what we're doing and we might need to change what we're doing. Does that make sense? Because, mm. you know, it, all those ideas come together and you hopefully come out all stronger yeah. at the end, yeah. isn't it? That's it. We have to do it in person. <laughs> well, next time, hopefully. Thanks. Dean, have we got another question? Yes, Bryony Smith. Bryony, good morning. Hi, welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you for letting us join today. We're at Hedgewood School, which is a local authority um, uh, primary special needs school in, ha in the, it's featured in the lovely Hayes. Uh, most of our children are autistic and have additional learning difficulties. And actually, Joanne, thank you so much for sharing and going before me, um, because that was particularly one of the questions that I was going to ask about making um, the questionnaires really meaningful. Uh, we have quite a wide range in our population, um, a number of children most of our children have autism, but also additional complex communication needs. Some of our children are nonverbal, um, and we have three different curriculum pathways. And some of some of the things that we um, have worked on in terms of our mental health and well-being and PSHE curriculum has been gathering. Um, we use a huge amount of qualitative data and narratives um, to to show the progress and the journey that our children are on, and we share that with parents via an app that we use, which is Seesaw, which uh, contributes to their learning journal. Um, but this year we explored how to use happiness indicators to um, work out, particularly for our non-verbal more complex population how we know um you know that rather than you, with our more able population zones of regulation is very relevant to them um but for our, our our more complex population we wanted to find other ways of capturing how they're feeling um and certainly what you said joanne about uh, incorporating it as part of the annual review and gathering um their thoughts and hopes for the future. It's always a challenge and has always been when we're contributing to the education, health and care plan. So we're really, really interested in becoming part of this network. I haven't filled in the, the newsletter yet. I have to speak to our head teacher, but it's something that we feel, at, you know, as a school, there will be, um, we can really, really invest in that. We've got lots of things going on and we want, we'd want we like a, a framework to pull it all together. Um, but certainly one of the questions I was going to ask was we have quite a diverse population with our families. And is there a translation <laughs> options for, for the questionnaires as well? Um, I'll, I'll swear that one, pass it to Rob, because you might. <laughs> <laughs> actually, what I do know is that the, the, the questionnaire as developed by Vals, so Professor Epen, sorry, um, is being used in about 23 different countries at the minute. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can ask her um, if she has any translations and we can make them available. Um, Failing that, I don't know what might be possible through other methods. I, I, I don't know is the answer, um, but we can definitely look into that. That can't be beyond no. the IT. So that, that's great. That gives us something to, to have a look at for you. We'll report back on that. And I'll ask Valsa, um, who's um, just been in touch this week, actually, um, just to see what, what she might have available. The um, the issue of different questionnaires, I think, is a really important one for us because, you know, we've got, we know we've got a population here and we worked with Valsa on, on this questionnaire because it, it, it works well for us. But we wouldn't want anybody to feel they can't be part of it just because that questionnaire is not right. So, as we've mentioned before, if there are small working groups that want to get together and collaborate and come up with something, um, if there are collaborations with, for example, a university that people think might be of interest and help, 
that's a really interesting development. We're forging links with um, uh, the University of Warwickshire, and uh, we, you know, we're keen for others to bring expertise into uh, the QOL network. So we want everybody to feel free to invite friends to come and join, because this is this is a forum for us all to share and benefit from. That's all it is. It's a way of meeting people who want to work in a similar way, who want to share ideas. It's a great way of looking at professional development, organizational development. And no one of us has got all the answers, um, but together we'll all be better off as a result of it. So um, please keep that in mind. And if you've got suggestions or ideas, or you know of other tools that people might use that may be better suited for a different cohort of young people, please put that into the into the chat room and, and we'll share it through the various um, communications that we have. Dean, I think I can see hands up. Yeah, I think it's Lisa again. Lisa. Hi, it's Luke this time from Henshaws. Uh, regarding the translations issues, am I right that the questionnaires are based on Microsoft Forms? Um, I don't think they're gathered in Microsoft Forms. I think it's um, it's been a kind of piece of software that we've we've had developed. But I can look I can look into that. Because if any questionnaire would be done in the Microsoft Forms, then immersive reader can be done. And immersive Microsoft Office immersive reader has extremely good translator, uh, so that could be automated for specific families. Just with a simple step by step guide, you could guide them to that translator, which will have probably 95% accuracy. As a sec English being my second language, I tested it a few times and I was very, very impressed by uh, how well it worked. Excellent. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you for that. Yeah, we'll definitely, have, I'll, I'll definitely take that away and have a look because that's a very important piece that we have built in. Brilliant. Brilliant. You see, the power of sharing. Um, any other questions coming up yet, Dean? Okay. Um, we've had a little bit of um, chat this morning and thanks to the contributors about curriculum development and obviously one of the things that is on the, the framework poster is about curriculum operational and strategic planning and bringing your di different aspects of curriculum together and I think we're all thinking that we've got bits of PSHE and out of school stuff and life skills and uh, various aspects of things and we some of you will have seen our independence plus curriculum um, if you haven't that's a resource that's available for anybody to see and we'll make sure that's I think that's in the um, if you get into the pie you'll be able to see the independence plus curriculum so there's another bit of incentive to get your pie sorted um, just to let people know we're, we're as part of our reflective practice we're working on that um, and so we're doing some short revisions around that in content terms it might end up looking you know the content is probably the content but in terms of how it's presented and how we use it how we link it to ehcp outcomes how we link it to risk assessments how we link it to qol targets how we link it to the questionnaires those are the sorts of things we're thinking so that it's it's a more integrated body of knowledge, skills, attitudes um, that we want to be working with our young people with um, and how families can contribute to that and collect evidence for when their children are at home, weekends, evenings, school holidays. Because I think many of our families tell us that they struggle to know what to do and how they can, you know, we're, we're um, in the fortunate position, many of our children are resident here. That, that may be the case for some of you, but not all, or for some of the students that you have. And it's it's far easier for us to work with our resident students in that way and collect that evidence in very natural situations so that it's not doesn't feel like you're doing a lesson, but you're actually just going about your business and talking to young people about the, what they want to do. But we use those as ways of collecting evidence. And that's really helpful to families. And we found that lots of families, we can use that through progress afternoons or progress evenings, through how we report in our end of term reports, our annual review reports, and how we show what we're going to be doing next and why we will be doing that. And then parents can go, oh, okay, well, if you're going to do a bit of work on 
using community facilities or getting the bus or whatever, we can do a bit of that as well. So we're thinking about how all of those bits knit together easily, as well as the collection of evidence, um, uh, how that's going to work going forward. It's well, a bit of a critical view whether we have a PHSC curriculum or all sit within an independence bus curriculum. And actually, it's a doubling up, and actually, we need to be looking at that PHSC curriculum in more of a holistic way and a generalised way, and all those things. So, there are sort of conversations between guys are saying we're bringing everything and putting it on the table. That's what we've been doing the last So, it sounds year. very much like you were saying, Lorraine, about yeah, how do we get all of these bits together? Reviewing that for ourselves and then how that's reported for annual reviews and then to turn reports. And some of that's kind of come from looking at that whole school QOL data about yeah. what's important to people and what, what, what our young people, families worry about. That's the stuff that needs to go into the curriculum. Yes. Yeah. Because it's obvious they've told us what that, that, that's the driver for yeah. developing that curriculum as we are improving it and making it more embedded and okay brilliant so we'll we'll keep reporting back on that i think some of you will have uh, met sarah uh sarah james is our lead speech and language therapist she's, she's an assistant principal here she spoke at the last qol workshop and fielded some questions and i know one of two of you have been in touch with me to get in touch with Sarah. So hopefully we've been able to do that. And if there are people who want to look at a little working group around that aspect of curriculum development, that's another thing that can come out of, out of our collaboration here. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll let know, uh, Sarah know if there's anybody else who's interested. Um, we're always happy to share our resources. Um, you may find that they're appropriate for your group. They may, you may find that, uh, you know, depending on, on the cognitive profile and the learning difficulties that your young people have, then they may not be right, but there may be something in there or the structure of how we've put that together. But it's important for you to know that we're still working on that and we'll continue to do so. And if anybody's interested in a joint bit of working, brilliant. It might be of less interest, but we also, how we tie, we can always do a bit of work on how we tie this in with school improvement planning and school evaluation. Yes. And department improvement planning and how we backtrack it, how we cross reference it with the residential care standards and our standards. So, how we've translated that piece of work as well, which might be of interest to people. I think it's a really good point because one of the things that we all know is, you know, we're doing the things because they're right to do. And it's important that we can talk to our staff about why we're working the way we're doing, how we talk to our uh, um, families about why we're doing what we do, how we talk to prospective parents about why we do what we do. And governance is an important aspect of that in whatever shape or form it is, because it's really important that governors understand why there is a strategic direction, what's, the, what's going to be the benefits of doing that, and therefore, we need to think about what information do we provide to governments to, to help them understand how this is working, why it's working, what's the valuable data, what are the metrics that we're using? And that's really helpful. So thinking about, we think about how we run our governors meetings with a focus on QOL for students, a focus on QOL for families in every one of those meetings, how we think about uh, our reports to governors, and the structure of those reports with a focus on QOL for students, focus on QOL for families, and how we are thinking about, you know, Rob's mentioned a couple of times, reflective practice. How do we know that what we're doing is right and how does it need to evolve? Because our schools, just like our own QOL, is dynamic. So, the, you know, the young people we have next year are going to be different to some of the young people we have this year. Their issues will be different. We've got to evolve. We've got to meet their needs. So our curriculum can't be static. And the way we think and behave as an organisation needs to reflect that. The, the, the parents that we're going to have next year will be different. How do we engage with them? So our whole parent communication, that's something to think about. Our governance and the conversations we have at that level are really important. Because it's important that all of our thinking is joined up. So that the conversations at governance, the school improvement planning, the self-evaluation, all of that information about how we're moving forwards through our inset, through our appraisal, it all hangs together.
together. Quantity of shorts as well, with external yeah. school approval partner, standards, 20 visits, the European approval partner. You know, we've sort of done quite a lot of work on that over the last 12 months. Uh, reached up for the leadership team, but I mean... And we can maybe have, have a focus on that at the next workshop. Maybe strategic, strategic goals, mm. how they filter down through our school improvement planning, how they're linked. Um, and again, these are not all of our own ideas. These are things that we've gathered over the last four or five years. We've got a really, really school improvement partner, Will Morgan for the Cotswold School, is an outstanding school. And the way we were school improvement planning and the way that he was doing it, we took a lot from talking over those conversations with him. So we can share that with other people. We can help them, you guys, other people a bit. That would be great as well. Okay, so we'll, we'll think about the, the QA side of it and how it looks externally in those um, bits at, at a future meeting. So I think that could be helpful. And again, if anybody's got any other ideas around that or they've developed some things, lovely to hear from you. We want to make sure that these work workshops uh, are not just about us chatting and giving information all the time and I think as we evolve that will become more uh, inclusive but certainly you know while we're doing these online it's it's this is a way to manage it but we know it's not how we'd like to be we want to get back to doing face-to-face -face workshops as soon as we possibly can we've got a slight issue with space on site at the minute um, because we've grown as a school and we're a bit of a building site, so that's a bit limiting, but we'll think of ways around that. Because I think there are huge benefits of us all being able to sit in the same room, have a cup of tea together, chat to each other, make friends, make networks, and we'll be able to use, if we can get everybody signed up to the pie, we'll be able to use that overview of how everybody's getting on with their commitment planning, implementation, evaluation, and set people up in little groups so that we can help you find people who are uh, working at the same stage as you or trying to address the same issues. And I think it is important when you look at that pie, you have a look at that and go, we don't have to do this task one, task two, task three in a sequential order. There will be things where you can go, we've got a bit of that, we've got a bit of that. Let's start with some stuff that's already ongoing in our school improvement plan. It's not about turning everything upside down. It's about going where we are as an organisation in our evolution and what's important to us. Let's see if we can dovetail these things together so it's helpful rather than trying to confuse people. And I think on a personal level, we've all been very stuck in our schools the last 18 months and I think the staff feel the same. And so some relationships with some other schools we can go out and look at what other yeah. people are doing and get ideas and be inspired and all those types of things which I know I'm very ready to do get out and about a bit and see what people are doing so hopefully spending a bit of time with each other as colleagues and sharing some sharing some good stuff yeah okay well we've covered quite a bit we've talked about um the QOL network we've talked about the Independence Plus curriculum. We've talked about um, the sort of contractual side of things that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, we've talked about the pie and the film and getting set up with the pie. Are there any other issues that's on anyone's mind about uh, any questions, anything you'd like to have on future agendas? Anything, any last thoughts that anybody would like to share? Dean, hopefully that's not everybody asleep, but, <laughs> but it might be. No. And, and hopefully if a little nap improves your quality of life, then that's great. Any last, everybody hopefully has my email address and, and Dean's email Ooh, address. Oh, Brian Smith. Brian, come on back. Hello, I'm sorry. I've, no, that's okay. I'm sat with my colleagues here in the office. We're, I'm really sorry as well, my... my um, Video screen's not working for some reason, so it's not that we're choosing to be that you can't see us. Um, just, just a question about key worker. Um, mm. I suppose it's different for different settings, but are, is there like a fundamental, like the 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 job description or principles around what a key worker role is? Brian, I, I'll answer it from us, and then other people feel welcome to chip in. When you go into your pie, there is a a template for a job description for a key worker that works for us. Okay. So that's there for you to have a look at and, a, and a, uh, you know, 
we, we put key working on the timetable for the boys. So it's uh, once a week on the timetable. We contact families on a weekly basis, but there are other opportunities for key workers to, you know, make contact with the boys on a daily and um, daily basis and through the week. But the actual essence and ethos around key working um, that you'll find that in the job description. So if uh, if you get yourself set up with a pie, there's another incentive, and you can eke that out. Well, we were, I suppose, we're a residential school, so key working is a part of sort of residential standards really that there's a key person within the school for our resident boys and that's sort of we've developed that idea and, and our initial kind of thoughts about key working is that person should be the advocate for that student so you know if there's not enough maths homework coming they should go and see the maths teacher and say come on he's not doing well enough just like a just like a parent would i suppose sort of chase chasing the teachers up chasing the care staff up talking to the kitchen if if you know the food's not right and we saw the role as very much you know knowing everything about that young person um making sure that they're getting the absolute best that they can out of the school um, and holding us all to account if that's not happening and and uh, and, and, and that pretty much how it works and, and i think we're really robust on the residential side of that we have a sort of two-thirds one-third bit one-third residential two-thirds day students and at the start, it seemed an insurmountable task to try and find everybody a key worker. But as that's become sort of embedded, um, some people have two or three young people that key work. Some people do, you know, dean here, exams officer, key works. Do you see what I mean? We, we have people doing it across the organisation, giving that importance, giving it time on the timetable, um, asking staff to sometimes work in a slightly different way with smaller groups to free staff up to do a decent job as a key worker and write those things up. Um, OIT was a bit of a challenge because people recording that, so we sort of built over sort of five, six years, people having a having a laptop each to be able to do that and to be able to record on that there. Um, it was very incremental and very, over a year or 15 months, quite slow in getting there. But, but now, I, now it's instilled and there, and it was sometimes hard to get some staff to um, see that that's part of their role to key work because potentially their time was ring fence because they were a therapist or someone else and actually people were understanding that actually they needed to understand the systems and the way of working for the school to be successful and whatever role they were doing in key working ensured that happened so now all our, oh, so all of our students have a key worker and their 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 role is is exactly that it's to champion what what it is they want that that young person wants and needs but also to be that conduit of information to and from home. So that, that we're working with the families using the family QOL information and supporting families to feel engaged in the whole school experience. Because one of the things we, we were very, very mindful of was for, for many of our families, certainly, well, they're, they're geographically a long way away from here. So we don't have a school gate culture for many of them. And, and their, their, their pathway through life has been difficult, either getting a school placement and just life in general, you know, the, the implications of having a young person with, with difficulties, with autism in our case, you know, the, the research tells us that family quality of life for young people with SEND is lower than for, for, for those who, who don't have SEND and actually for those with autism is lower again. And that's what that, that's what the uh, the research tells us. So we have to be mindful of how are we supporting families, and then thinking about are there issues around siblings that we, we can help with in that wider family uh, unit, because we know you know from Emily Gardner's research, all our young people are interconnected parts of that family. So what happens in the family has an impact on the young person. What happens on the to the young person has an impact on the family. And we have to be mindful of what that dynamic is. So the key working is crucial in bringing all those bits together. And that's why our key workers are very pivotal people in our annual review process, in our, in our you know, talking to parents on progress day, that sort of thing. And culturally, in a meeting, it's not me talking or the clinical scientist talking, it's a flatter structure where the person spends most time speaks first. And their voice is important. People are feeding into that person to support them, and then 
spreading it further yeah. out. So it's um, it's, I think it's really added interest to the um, to all the staff's work. I think it has added work to it and added a level of complexity, but I'm not sure they totally agree. But I do think it's. Uh, I'm sure everybody totally agrees. With you read it every day, right? Every day, but it's added a level of engagement in an LSA that's just doing a timetable or supporting kids in lessons. It has given them a level of. I think you're right because it gives every single person in the school a taste of everything within the school. So you have to be able to use the recording systems. You have to go to reviews. You have to go to um, students causing concern. You. You do know what's going on in school because that's part of the role. You do know what's going on in residential because that's part of the role. So um, it's no longer there are, there are no longer people who who are kind of siloed that don't know what's going on somewhere else. It's created more of a team where you yeah. have residential and education and it's into one of those. I mean, Dean, you do it. Do you agree? Do you think? That's yeah, right? I agree. I've been I'm key working a year thirteen, and I've been key working him since he was in year seven, and it's you know it's helped me work with all the people that come in contact with my key child and I've had to learn a lot about you know what he does and support him in that and through therapy or his education or his independent life skills that he needs to learn and obviously that communication with the family has been really important and obviously those years that I've spent talking to the family has helped me support my key child in school and it it's interconnects really quite nicely and um, you know you get to obviously Kieran talked about the positives of key working and quality of life and you get to help students achieve things that they hoped to do in year seven that they're able to do in year 11 and year 12 and 13 and you get to share that with the family as well and it's it's a yeah it's a really rewarding role as well as challenging um, and I do actually quite enjoy doing it alongside my other roles within the school. Brilliant that's the best endorsement we could have <laughs> Any, anybody else want to chip in about key work? Hopefully that helps, uh, Brian. So you just asked about a job description, Brian, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is one on the point. <laughs> we went off a tangent. Anybody else want to say anything about key working, uh, what they're doing or what they're about to do? Maybe, maybe you've covered it all there, Dean. Got it. Okay, well, um, We'll, we'll, we'll wrap up there. We've, we've done nearly an hour and a half. So thank you so much, everybody, for giving up your time. I know everybody's really busy. Hope you found it helpful and informative. Um, and hopefully that gives you some thoughts about what you might want to do. Um, but please make sure the next thing you start to think about is filling in that form and getting uh, linked in with your Pi. We'll, we'll, we'll be in touch again soon through the Pi network and the next newsletter. Um, We'll have thoughts about the next workshop. And if anyone's up at York, come and say hello to us. Do so, yes. Feel free to buy us a drink. It's fine. We're open to that. <laughs> You've mentioned alcohol at four o'clock. Why need you fill out the pie? Don't <laughs> start. And then you yeah, yeah. the conference through alcohol again. But, but we do know that you've got to keep reiterating these messages, otherwise it yeah. doesn't get through. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Hopefully we've been successful in that round. I think everyone thinks you've got a problem now. So. <laughs> Sponsored by Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Thanks.